Um, I'm uh, Brenda Andrews. I'm a professor and uh, university professor and best chair of medical research at the University of Toronto. I'm director of the Donnelly Centre and I'm also a senior fellow in the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research. So I think um, the difference between genomics and functional genomics, genomics is the science of determining a genome sequence. And um, as I mentioned before, with that we can do quite easily. We can determine genome sequences now in any organism in a very short period of time for little money. Functional genomics is the science of trying to understand that information. And that requires us to manipulate the genome in some way to see what the consequences are of perturbing certain genes or certain sequences in the genome. That's a lot harder. Um, there's no high throughput technology for doing that um, in all systems, so one has to develop methods that work in different systems, and it's better if you can kind of think about a focused experiment that you'd like to do. But it's a major challenge that will require a huge investment by labs around the world to try to really understand what each gene in the human genome is doing, how those genes work together to make cells function the way they do, how do genes work together to make a normal liver cell versus a tumor cell in the liver, et cetera. We need to really understand all of how this, how, basically how these genes are wired together in order to make a certain outcome. And we're getting there, and some of the uh, projects that are ongoing in our center involve trying to perturb genes by themselves or in combinations to try to figure out what happens to the cell. So that's a science of functional genomics. I hope that over the next few years, um, a lot of current methods will be developed, such as uh, genome engineering methods that have come out in the last few years, that they'll be further developed so that we can do functional genomics experiments uh, much faster and interpret them better. Uh, the research center that I work at in Toronto is called the Donnelly Center. It was established about 10 years ago um, with the idea of put it, setting up a center for integrative biology. And the idea was um, to make rapid progress in, in functional genomics mainly, we need to put scientists with different expertise together in the same place. So we're at a big university, the University of Toronto. It has a great computer science department, a great physics department, a great chemistry department, big faculty of medicine, but those people never talk to each other. So we thought we should put them all together in the same space and then new science will emerge. So when we finished building the building and it opened in 2006, uh, we put scientists in the building from applied sciences and engineering, people that were expert in stem cell engineering, um, other people from the chemistry department, and a lot of computer scientists, because you need a lot of computer scientists to interpret genome information, and then other uh, geneticists that were doing these large-scale screens. And so over the past 10 years, we also recruited new people into the building that filled gaps in our expertise. And now we have many, many ongoing projects that involve collaborations between at least five or six different uh, scientists in the center and their trainees. And so we consider that our biggest success when we see that a project has started because of who we are and where we are together in the same building that probably wouldn't have happened if we were scattered across other buildings. So that was the concept. And the partnering with India that um, is ongoing at the moment was set up largely by uh, Sashdev Sidhu, who's a professor in the Donnelly Center. And he was recruited uh, to the center from Genentech um, in the United States, where he developed platforms for um, basically doing a, pro uh, a technical platform called phage display. And this allowed him to engineer proteins, so these are the building blocks of cells that are encoded by the DNA, to engineer proteins to do basically what he wanted them to do. And his specialty is antibodies. And antibodies are one of the largest growing drug, um, drugs in the, in the world or drug sectors in the world. And so Dev set up this platform at the Donnelly Center and has been collaborating with Sam Santouche um, to try to think about how we might work together to make uh, new antibodies uh, that are targeted against largely oncology targets um, uh, together. It's hard to predict because I think um, five years ago, if you'd asked me how I would see the future, I would have been completely wrong. And the reason is two things happen. One, uh, DNA sequencing got a lot cheaper. And I think that if someone predicted that it would be, uh, they were wrong, right? They just weren't thinking straight. And also, we've gotten better methods for genome engineering. So the CRISPR-Cas9 system can now be used to precisely engineer the human genome. And that wasn't available five years. It simply wasn't there. So it's hard to predict what will be if you can't even imagine what techniques might come down the line. So that makes it challenging, but it makes it very exciting, a very exciting time in biomedicine. 
but I certainly think that we will have huge amounts of genome, human genome sequence information. I know there's many projects here in India, for example, to sequence um, human genomes. There's projects like that around the world. And I think we'll get way better at understanding it. Um, our methods, uh, our computational methods will get better. So I think the flow of information five years from now will be much smoother and much more valuable.